Let's get this out of the way. Uh, Kim Woodburn. Oh, I, I, honestly, I don't know what to say. I, it was... Uh, if I could go back in time, I would change the whole thing because it was never meant to be like that. I, I honestly, genuinely thought that it was... She was coming on to make amends. That's what I was told that was going to happen. Anyone and we were going to have a laugh about it and make amends. amends for... Cos you'd had a bit of a clash in the Big Brother yeah, house well, when you'd been there all together. of us, yeah. yeah. Um, so she, it she was like, oh, let's put it to bed, let's have a laugh with it, let's make mm -hmm. amends. And it didn't go that way, obviously, from the moment she came out. And, um, and I have to say, it was... It was so shocking, genuinely shocking for all of us. None of us wanted that. I don't like to see anybody in that much distress how she was in the end, you know, and um, it was just one of those things. It, it's been the worst week of my life, actually. Oh, I'm so it's sorry. Horrible. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right. No, nobody, well, it's horrible seeing you like this because you're always such a happy person when you're in here and everything and it's I'm horrible. I'm so sorry, I didn't think I was going to cry. No, that's all right. It is horrible because <gasps> we, were, we were just talking about, about it just then and this is, you know, you're in, you're in the eye of a storm at the moment and there has been a huge reaction to this. It's and just I... that. It's, it's... I don't know what I did wrong. I didn't say anything. I said about two things in that interview because I know what she's like and I just thought... It's... She needs help, really, and I, I feel terribly sorry for her. So I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Sometimes it's hard because I've never called her names or anything. She's called me every name under the sun in print on that show, and that's fine. I can deal with that. But to be called a bully and then to have messages going, you know, why can't you die like your sister? I know. It's why that's... can't you get cancer like your sister? I've had a week of it, mm. and in 50-odd years of doing a job I absolutely love, really love, and it's all I know how to do. You know, there's a campaign to get me fired, and um, and they talk about me being a bully or a horrible bully, and then they send me these revolting, and there revolting... Is no you were, and to you the need point to, where I said, are... I found my management and said to my kids, I can't... I cancelled everything last week after it, and I just said, I can't do it, I don't want to do it but anymore. But you, you've, been, you've been in this business long enough know. to know the, <laughs> the nutters that take to, to Twitter and to social media, and the, the fact that there's a keyboard warriors sit in their rooms and, and they can say anything at all. Yeah. But it's not right, and then they wonder why... I think I'm strong, you know, I've been... Like you said, I've been in it years, and I, I feel strong. And I've dealt with, you know, trolls and everything before. But then I thought, God, if this has affected me this much, mm. what if I was 14 or 15 and then they wonder why kids' mental health is out of control? Yeah. It's revolting bullying, mm. you know, and it's... I wouldn't wish it on anyone and I, and I would never wish harm on Kim. I don't hate Kim. I, we'll never be friends and that's fine, yeah. you yeah. know, but I would never set out to bully her. Yeah. Do I react sometimes to being called everything she calls me? Yes, and sometimes I laugh because I think she's got a point. Mm. You know, but it was just... It's just been a really hard way. Well, I think for well, everybody listen. involved in that, I think it's... Oh, you know... God, I'm so sorry. No, no, don't no, right. so I feel so such fine. an You're idiot. Very, you're very <laughs> human. You've always been very human. <laughs> so don't... <laughs> listen, don't worry about that. And, 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 the, and the last piece of you're advice right. has got to be, you yeah, know, yeah. when you don't look on social media, when you don't check your phone, they've all gone away. I've yeah. got... I've got I've, I'm off everything. Gone away. Yeah. Now I'm and also, also, the most important thing is, like, you mustn't let... All of that overshadow all the exciting no. things that are coming up because actually, this sort of stage of your life right now is, is a really exciting stage. Mm. You know, there's been a lot of change in your life, mm. um, and I think that's kind of what's stem spurred you on to this big challenge that you've set yourself. And this is this is your tour. This is your solo <laughs> tour. Don't make me cry again. No, no, <laughs> I know. I won't. I won't. I'll I'll see you. I've got this a box is... full here. Don't worry. <laughs> this is quite, um, this is quite a bold move for you because obviously you've always been with the girls, with your sisters. I've always, yeah. And when I wasn't with my sisters, and then went into presenting, I was with my girls. Girls, you know, I've always been with a group. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, when I was first, it was first mentioned to me, I was like, oh, no, I can't. I just can't do it. And then, you know, I got into my... As soon as I hit my 50s, actually, I got to that point of... I feel like there's a bit of society, and it's probably your own um, way of thinking, where you think, my kids are grown up, they don't really need me. Am I kind of done here? Mm. You know, you do feel a bit... I, I never believed in that midlife crisis, and then I hit it. And then losing Bernie was a massive, yeah, massive yeah. life-changing, you know, where all my thought process changed. And then, of course, me and Ray didn't make it. And um, 
And I haven't actually cried through any of that. So I think some of this is all of that. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah know? it's been building. Um, and luckily me and Ray and everything are great friends, but it did just make me reassess my life. And I thought, don't let you or anyone else tell you you're too old or you're too fat or you're too ugly or to do anything you want to do. I don't think anybody should ever feel that. So I thought, why don't you just do it? Yeah. Just go for it because I think later on in life, if I didn't, I'd regret it, and I don't want to have regrets. Well, ig ignore all of that. I'm so obviously. sorry about... I don't honestly apologize. Sorry. I, I didn't know listen, that was going to happen. You're amongst friends, and, you know... We... I think it's just a build-up, and you've been so nice, and I feel, uh, uh, you know, it's just been horrendous. Yeah. Mm. And I apologise to anyone. You know, no one was more upset by that show than I was. Mm. Mm. All right. So, all right. Well. Liz, uh, it, it, the most important Ugh. thing for you now is you concentrate on what sounds like it's going to be an amazing time for you. Yeah, and a big adventure. I hope so. um, and it's, it's called It's Never Too Late. Exactly. It's the Never Too Late Tour. Yeah. And as I said, it starts uh, in January on the 11th at Manchester Apollo. Tickets are on sale now. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, right. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank you. We're, uh, <laughs> we're actually going to walk out on you. Why now. is everyone here? <laughs> Every time I'm on telly, people oh, walk so out. So <laughs> Sorry. I didn't even make you a cup of tea. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. See you later, Killeen. No, no you later. we are going to see Dr Chris. It's for very good reason. I think I need to. <laughs> Hello, Dr Chris. <laughs>